Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's not the same show. And funnily enough, I was with uh, Sarah Lancashire, and we were burying one of the old guard writers, John Stevenson, who came from a crop of writers that had cut their teeth in drama at ITV and all the rest of it. They were, they were stunning writers. They had an awful lot more time because it was two episodes a week or maximum three. They didn't have endless hour-long specials. It was just a tighter ship. And Sarah and I were talking. We had a, we had a, um, a nice afternoon together, and we both agreed that um, John wouldn't recognise the show, and that it, it, it is a fundamentally different show now. Um, and and I would say, um, not for the better. I think is the, the the cast is far too big. Um, I would like to have it reduced in, in number, but it, the the trouble is that everybody watches TV in a different way now. I would fear that Corey might not be there, same as EastEnders, Emmerdale, 10 years time because people just dip in now. And if you look at the figures when we were there in the 90s, you know, anywhere from 16 million to 20 million. I mean, now I think they're down sort of five and six because, not because the show is necessarily, it's because people watch differently. Um, I think by necessity, if you have a huge cast, the standards are not going to be as good as if you have when we were there, it was 30, okay? I've dipped in and out of it, and um, I think some of it is stunning. I mean, if you've got an actress like Alison King, poor thing's absolutely knackered sometimes because if you've got the best center forward on the park, Alison's the best center forward on the park, use her, and they do. Simon, et cetera, et cetera. These people who've been around the block and who are quality, you know, they, they get flogged sometimes. I think some of the newcomers um, just lack the experience. Now, you only get experience with work or whatever, so you know they can only improve. Um, but it's a different animal altogether. And, and, and it's, excuse me for all you online um, listeners or viewers or whatever, it, it is mired in political, uh, political correctly woke. And, uh, and that is the same for every... The whole of the television industry is now steeped and dipped in this sort of stuff what you can't say and what you can't say. And consequently, um, having talked to Ian, uh, he's one of the few producers who actually bothers his rear end to talk to actors. And um, I was talking to him last year. Uh, and, you know, the question about, you know, would you come back? And uh, my response was, we're in the name of Jesus, you put Jim. Do you know what I mean? He, he just wouldn't fit in. And therefore, you'd have to sort of, um, you'd have to change him. You'd have to cut his nuts off effectively and change him completely. And I, I couldn't play that. Um, it would be a disservice to the writers from the 90s, and it would be a disservice um, to the current writers, and it would be a disservice to me and a disservice to the character who became a legend through the 90s and, and has been back about six or seven times and has been allowed to operate freely. Um, and, and, and I think probably sad to say that um, <laughs> the way I can see this, obviously I want the character to stay alive forever, but you can see that there is a storyline where Jim McDonald returns to die because it would be brilliant for Beverly, for Nick, for uh, Simon, um, allegedly for me, although I wouldn't be that happy. But um, do you know what I mean? And I mean, that's a storyline. I just don't see where you can drop them in now. I might be totally wrong. Somebody might come up with some form where Jim, uh, you know, something crazy. Jim meets a transgender young character and falls in love and takes this person under his wing or what, you know, but that takes a hell of a writing, so it does. <laughs> I have spoken to people, as you know, people who I know in the cast, and um, it's not as happy as it was, that's for sure. It's a, it's a huge machine that churns out w whatever it does. So um, time, time is of the essence. So there's less time for enjoyment, there's less time for fun, um, there's less time to get to know the vast quantity of people there. When I started, there was 25. Um, and I just don't think it's the happiest ship that it used to be because it doesn't have time to be happy. 
you know, um, we, didn't, we didn't have a welfare officer, but the welfare of the actors and actresses then was, was, was obvious to see, because it was a unit like that. Everybody knew when someone was down, everywhere. I don't know what it's like now, but from the people I speak to, they, they find it a slightly less jolly place, certainly, to put it nicely than it was. My fear is that in 10 years' time, will we have a Corrie, an EastEnders or an Emmerdale? Will they exist? Will people still be watching? You know, I don't know how it works in Golden Square, but you've got to find the money from somewhere. And that's advertising, so, you know, who knows? I mean, I wish Corrie well, for Christ's sake. You know, it's been around for 60-odd years. Uh, I can't see it being here in another 60.